and welcome to another episode of Carpool. My name is Robert Llewellyn and every week I give someone interesting, or famous or wonderful a lift and we have a conversation. This week, however, there is a slightly different slant to the show. Normally we don't talk about the car or anything to do with the cars, it just happens to take place in a car. This week's show takes place in an electric vehicle. It was recorded in Santa Monica in California earlier this year and the man, the man who is my passenger owns the car and he let me have a drive of it because it's very unusual. Um, so please welcome into his own passenger seat, with me in the driver's seat, the very kind and very charming Mr. Paul Scott. So now, what do I do? Foot on brake or anything like that? Yeah, you get your thing on there, so yeah, foot on brake. And I just turn that. Yeah. Oh. That was probably us knocking it. And then can we, can we, I think you can. That. Oh, yeah, you're, you're ready to go. There you go, yeah. That's all there is to it. There's not, not a lot to these things. No, so which way should we go first of all? Um, let's go that way. That way, okay. <laughs> Even though I've driven electric vehicles before, this, you know, it is still, you know, I, I, because I drive a Prius, uh -huh. so you can do this, you can drive off this fast in a Prius, it's right. all electric, but then you're constantly hit, waiting to hear that. <sighs> yeah, it always comes in. So at the next stop sign, at the bottom of the hill, we're going to go to the right. Right. Now, does this one do things like, like exactly in this situation, is it recharging, do you get you regenerative get your brake? You regen right regen, now, right. And, and you're probably not using any of the brake pads at this point, wow. you probably will before, by the time you get to the bottom. Yeah. Because at some point it does use the brake pads. Right. There's not enough engine brake to stop the car. We're going to go right here. So I go right here. That's uh -huh. right. And that was a four-way stop. So right. Did I do that right, though? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, Absolutely. You're, good. You're doing great. <laughs> so we're going to go straight through okay. um, at this light, and uh, we're going to stay on this road for about a mile and a half. Right. Okay. We're going to take you down to Montana Avenue where there's right. a charger. Kind of show you what we do. And you know, when you, when you live in Santa Monica and you have an electric car, it's very easy. The city yeah. of Santa Monica has been very proactive in uh, encouraging the use of electric vehicles. Right. And in doing so, they've put a lot of public charging in place. So right. we have uh, chargers all over town and nice shopping areas. So yeah. You can go and park your car for free, right. charge it for free, right. and go have a cup of coffee or dinner yeah. or shop or whatever you want to do. And um, so we we take advantage of that yeah, all the I'm time. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> and you charge it for free. They don't. You don't even pay for the, the no, electricity. No, wow. We, they give it to you for free. Now that's going to happen for quite some time. But eventually, it, when, sure when there's enough electric that, cars, yeah. you know, they'll they'll be charging for yeah. the energy. But it's okay because the cost of the electricity is is about like buying gasoline for maybe eighty cents a gallon or something right, like that. Right. It's very cheap. Yeah. Now you probably are aware that Chris Payne, who directed Who Killed the Electric yeah. Car, is in production now on That's right. Revenge of the Electric Car. Yeah, yeah, which is very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So they're actually shooting out at the moment, or they're they're getting ready to shoot it. They've been shooting for about a year, right. and they've got about another year of shooting wow. and editing to go. Uh, we we expect. I mean, nobody knows exactly when it's going to come out yeah. uh, until we get a little bit closer. But you know, you you want to have a lot of electric cars coming into the market and and and, and an assurance that it's absolutely going to happen on a big scale before yeah. you release a movie that says "Revenge of the Electric Car." Yes. Because there's no revenge when you've just got a, a few hundred vehicles on the road. Yes. Yeah. And you've got thousands on the road yeah. with tens of thousands about to hit the market. That's revenge. Because I mean, the, the the really common argument I get all the time in the UK is um, batteries aren't the future hydrogen is the future that's it you know and I, and I get I, t I cannot tell you how many emails YouTube comments Twitters you know it's tens of thousands well those but, people are all <laughs> speaking from ignorance I can yeah. assure you of that if they look at the 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 physics and the economics of hydrogen yeah. it's a non-starter right end of story period there, there's just no way that hydrogen in a fuel run in a fuel cell will ever be uh, practical for right. vehicles. So um, now, and, and even hydrogen ice, which is you know, hydrogen used in an internal combustion engine, yeah. even that is not practical because of storage issues yeah. and yeah. the cost of the hydrogen. Yes. Especially when you've got something like battery electrics that are so practical and so yeah. affordable even today, and only they're only going to get cheaper. But, because well, how old is this? This vehicle is what? Did you say six, six, six and a half years. Right. Uh, it's got seventy thousand miles, or just about seventy thousand yeah. on it. Yeah. And every one of those miles was driven on sunlight. So. You so you. That's extraordinary. Seriously, you I have never that. you have never used cold. 
coal powered no, electricity we, or you know carbon so it, this is a genuinely carbon neutral Oh, yeah. from Absolutely. the point of view it's moving along. Absolutely. Other than the energy and materials that it took to manufacture the yeah, car yeah. and the solar system, there's absolutely nothing wow. well to wheels but wow. sunlight. Wow. Um, it would be hard to do that, to be honest, where I live. <laughs> <laughs> we have seen the sun. We know what it looks like. <laughs> but you have all that North Sea wind <laughs> well, we got, up there. We've got loads of wind. Yeah. Oh, boy, where I live, we've got plenty of wind. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Yeah. Oh, that is amazing. So you have solar panels at home then that, that are recharging it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now it's a bright sunny day, as yeah. you can see, and and uh, so my solar system it's a three kilowatt AC. I'm sorry, yeah, three kilowatt AC system. Right. And it generates way more than I use during the day. Right. So my meter spins backwards. Right. So as the sun comes up in the morning, you know I'm using energy in the house, yeah. and the meter is spinning the normal direction. Yeah. But as the sun comes up, the it wakes up the solar system. Yeah. And then as it gets higher in the sky, it generates more and more power and the meter spins slower and slower right. and then ultimately the meter stops and then it starts spinning backwards. Right. And then right. the higher the sun goes, the faster it spins. Yeah. So like right now I'm generating a lot of power at home. Yeah. So I'm making these clean kilowatt hours and I'm, I'm selling them back to Edison, my yeah. utility. Yeah. And so they're giving me these credits for these kilowatt hours. Right at a high rate because I'm on a, a rate schedule and you're going to love this. They have something called time of use rates, which means electricity costs more during the day. Yeah. And, and that's so, when you're generating. And that's when I'm generating. So I get to sell I get straight it to over here, straight ahead. Yeah. Now, I, now, who's yeah, got right away This is a four-way, so you have the right away I have the right away now, now yeah. do I? Oh, yeah. I hope everyone else agrees with you. Yeah. Yeah. They've agreed with well, you. Well, they're, 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 they're all looking at you going, why aren't you going? <laughs> that's the worry. If you're not going to yeah. take it, I'll take it. Yeah. So at any rate, the um, uh, the time of use enables me to sell my electricity at this high rate, and in the summer I can sell it at 33 cents per kilowatt hour, but I buy it back at night at around 12 cents. Right. So you you end up in a really good situation. Yeah. My my electric bill for the last six years has averaged about a hundred dollars per year, <gasps> and that's oh, for the house man. and the car. Wow. Oh, geez. That's extraordinary. I haven't been to a gas station in over six years. Wow. And wow. I've driven 70,000 miles. 70,000 miles, wow. It's a but if you had to do a long haul, then that would be the next question everyone asks you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, what if you want to drive to Colorado or something? I mean, what, how would you do that? I mean, well, I've got. Or would you just not drive that? You wouldn't. No, no, no. I, 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 well, first of all, if I could fly, I would fly. Yeah. I would either borrow or rent a Prius. Right. And, right. and which I've done yeah. on, on a couple of Cape Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, saw I did see it. I thought she was starting I, to lean that way. I thought, way. yeah, <laughs> I suddenly thought she's going a different way. We're, so now I want you to see the, the charger right there. Well, I see the, the white box there. There's a couple of them. I there. see. Oh, I so see. Yeah, yeah. That's where I park and charge right. my car for free while I'm getting coffee up the street right. or dinner down here or a haircut. So I end up doing a lot of shopping on this street because of the free charger. Yeah. yeah. All of these people have to put money in the meter and pay yes. for their parking. I get it for free. Plus, I get to charge my car. Yeah. So that's a good deal. You, you can't turn that down. That that story of the General Motors electric vehicle, mm -hmm. which General Motors made, mm -hmm. how long ago? I mean, like ten years ago, they would have been. Oh yeah, they, it, they, they? the EV1 first came onto market in 1996. Right. So That's you're disgusting. yeah, a long time ago. And this was as a result, very much as a result of legislation passed in California about, yes. but really to do with local area pollution of, you yes. know, sort of and, and kids with asthma and that kind of, you know, trying to counteract the the effects of. That's correct. Millions of petrol motor vehicles. You could probably go. Okay, yes. Yeah. But that, you know, it is such an extraordinary story. When you tell people, yeah, well, then they, they took them all back and they crushed them. Mm -hmm. And they go, well, didn't they work? No, they were really well. Loads of people wanted them. And it's such a, a bizarre story. It is. It is bizarre. And when, when we were living in the middle of it, trying to get people to listen to us, uh, it was just bizarre because, you know, we knew this truth and that these cars worked yeah. and they worked really well. They were the answer to three of the most perplexing problems in the world, and that is environmental degradation. And we're not talking just about the air pollution, but water pollution and soil pollution yeah. from, uh, you know, every internal combustion engine drips oil yeah. over time, and the roads are covered with yes. them. And it, when it rains, it washes into the ocean. Of course it does, yeah. So it, it, it's, it's pollution on a grand scale. Yeah. Um, so it, it solves those problems in a very significant way. Yeah. Then there, you have the economic issues of buying foreign oil 
And, yeah. and in our country here, we spend something close to, you know, between five and seven hundred billion dollars per year for foreign oil. And that's going out of the economy. Basically. Out of the that's economy, the American economy. Enriching other yeah. people. And, yeah. and then you have the national security issue. Yeah. You know, when we buy that oil, some of it we buy from our enemies. Yeah. And uh, we enrich them. So essentially, what we're doing is buying the bombs and the bullets that yes. are killing our own soldiers. But I mean, the, the, the double iron is, in some ways, they become your enemies because you bought the oil. It's, it's, it's oh, yeah. funding the problem, but it also created it in the first place. If you, yeah. you know, it is. And when you drive an electric car, you eliminate all of that. Yeah. All of yeah. your energy money is domestic because all of our electricity is domestic, with, with the exception we do buy some hydro energy from Canada. Right. But, you know, uh, they're our friends, and we, I think we even buy a little natural gas energy from uh, Mexico right. uh, down here. But uh, by and large, you know, all the electricity is domestic. There you go. Now that is, you know, that's as fast as you want to accelerate. I mean, it's the same, you know, that I was a little bit aggressive it, then just to see. But it, it, was, it actually is faster than the gas version. Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, quicker from zero to so, 80. It, right. So yeah. it'll, do, it'll do 80 miles an hour? Oh, yeah. Wow. I used to do it a lot just to show people. Yeah. I don't so much anymore just because it uses a lot of well, energy. Exactly. Yeah. Fast. And it's and it's a, well, I mean, it's, it's it's sort of almost becoming a grand old lady, you know, yeah. to have a six-year-old car. That, <laughs> you that's really fantastic. want to protect it, you know, yeah. for a while because yeah. it's going to be another year, year and a half before the new electrics are out. So um, I just want to make sure that this one lasts at least that long, yeah. and it, it will. Um, the only thing that'll go wrong with it is the battery. Yes, right. And I mean, is this, and it's the original battery at the moment. Yeah, oh, it yeah. is, right. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah. The battery should last. Uh, well, we've had some of them get up to 150, over 150,000 miles before they need. And the motor to be. the same. The electric motor does that. I mean, does, does that need? Uh, the motor will last a million miles. Right, I see. Yeah, the motors are solid. Yeah. I mean, it is those things when you start to list those, well, which they, they did do in the movie, didn't they? But I mean, the amount of moving parts, mm -hmm. you know, and you list the amount of moving parts in an internal combustion engine is, I don't even know what it is, it's hundreds. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's quite yeah. a few. And, and of course, they all wear on each yeah. other. And yeah. That's why the, there's oil in there is to yeah. keep the friction from tearing the engine apart. And you, you have none of that in these electric cars. Yeah. They just go and go. So this is one of the, the things I tell people about in, in an electric car is that you will have no worries. You will never wonder, is my car going to start? Yes. Uh, yeah. It will always start. It will always work exactly the same. It's very predictable. Yeah. You notice how the accelerator, when you when you step on it, it's very smooth yeah, and, yeah. and predictable. Yeah. And with a, with a gas car, you might have some rough spots or yeah. you might race a little bit or fall back. And you never have that with the electrics. Yeah. And have you ever been in a position? Because I think it's that the unknown that when you suggest to people you could have a, you could have an electric car now, and they go, well, yeah, what happens if it runs out on the mo on the freeway or something? And they go, well, just, when did you last run out of petrol on the freeway? They go, well, I never have. Well, you, def you yeah. know, my argument is, well, you never would with the battery. You'd see, oh yeah. my goodness, it's yeah. about to run out. It's the beauty uh, of having, and this is one of the, the really good aspects of an electric car, is they're very accurate. You know, right. Uh, it came. This car came with. Uh, analog gauges, just like a regular car yes. does, but um, some engineers that had them uh, were able to break into the computer, the master computer in the car, right. and they wrote a program for a Palm Pilot to uh, read that computer, and so we know exactly what's going on in the right. car. Right, oh, I see, on that. Uh, yeah, wow. so that tells me we've got 45% state of charge, I mean, right. it's to a tenth of a percent, Wow. and I know exactly how far I can go on each percent. Yes. So it's incredibly accurate, and you know exactly how far you can go. So these days, with uh, GPSs or Google Maps, yeah. when you're driving someplace unfamiliar, you know how far it is, yeah. and you can tell whether you've got enough range to go. So if you're dead empty and you want to charge it full, it takes about five and a half hours, and that's on a 240 volt, 30 amp circuit. Right. So that's just really what you run your fridge, your fridge on. I mean, just well, an ordinary household. Yeah, it's circuit. actually what we run our dryers on here. But, right. Because um, oh, we're we're all 240 volts in the UK. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, we're, yeah. We run our refrigerators and lights and everything on 100. Right. Volts. Yes. But yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's just a matter of the voltage and amperage. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, you know we we charge this at about six uh, kilowatts of power and uh, and that's reasonably fast. Um, 
there are there's a manzanita charger that some people have found works with this and it'll go up to about i think 50 amps right so you can get the charge time down to around three hours right uh, but we don't typically take it all the way down and charge it full we no. just do convenience charging when we go for coffee we'll just, just park plug it in that anyway we're in there yeah. for an hour drinking coffee and talking to friends and yeah. it's charging for an hour so you just grab it wherever you can um, and then if you know like the next day there are times when i have to drive long distances so i'll um i'll charge it full yeah and and make sure i've got enough to make the round trip so, and i don't know i mean what is the sort of maximum range you could get out of it then um i i can get an easy 120 miles wow yeah which considering it's really the last generation of battery technology oh yeah and everybody's yeah, always they, saying that i mean because the arguments are just so frustrating but you know oh you can only do 20 miles well no you can't no. you know that you can do so you this which is really yeah i mean it's there's another generation of technology since this was built oh, this yeah. does 120 miles oh yeah yeah the oh, um oh. the uh, lithium i just want you to hear that <laughs> viewers <laughs> <laughs> lithium ion batteries would uh, enable this car in the same form factor, you know, right. not a bigger pack or anything, uh, probably to get 160, 180 miles right. of range. Right. Um, and that's this is not an aerodynamic car. No. If you were to build a car from scratch to be an electric yes, car, yes, you wouldn't and shape it like this, it, really, yeah. would you? No. Yeah. But it's a it's a very comfortable car to drive. It's got fantastic visibility. Yeah. But I mean, this was effectively what, which is what this was. This was a originally designed a as, a, as a gas car. Wasn't it? Right. Yeah. Right. And they, since they had to comply with the law. They picked this platform because it was an easy one to do, and they did a terrific job because of, of all the the six car makers that made electric cars, this was the best one that was made. Right. It ended up being pretty much bulletproof. Yeah. Um, and had they continued with this design and just you know improved it year yeah. after year like they do with all the other cars, uh, it would be an amazing car today. Yeah. But so what was the thing? So they only produced them for a very limited period of time. Mm -hmm. and do, I mean, do you know why that was? I mean, is there, have you ever... Well, the car talk? makers wanted, people ask me this a lot. Well, if people wanted to buy electric cars, well, the car makers would build them for yeah. them, right? Well, no. The car makers get 40% of their profit from parts and service. This is their own number. Right. And so 40%. when they sell a car, on average, they get about 60% of the profit, and then the other 40% comes in subsequent years as the uh, all driver all brings the it back for oil yeah. changes, tune-ups, things like yeah. that. Now, a lot of it's covered under warranty for a while, but yeah. eventually they start paying for parts yeah. and things like that. Um, and that's where a lot of the profit comes from. Well, this car needs virtually no maintenance yeah. at all. I mean, presumably it's brakes and tires are the things that you... Not even you, brakes. Really? No, you, you, just, you reckon you use less... Oh, the, well, the, it's all regenerative to braking. Right. So the brake pads hardly ever get used. Wow. Only in, in hard stops. Yeah. So they'll last the life of the car. Wow. So you've got windshield wipers, and yeah. you've tires, got tires, yeah. um, and that's pretty much my rear shocks. I had to put new rear shocks right. on. Right. And, and that's really been it in wow. 70,000 miles. Wow. Because by 70,000 miles with an average gas car, you've spent... A, a few lot of money, dollars, uh, just services. oil changes yeah, yeah. and all that. And you know, what is your time worth going to a gas station? Yeah, I, I spend no time charging this. Yeah. I spend maybe three seconds plugging it right. in, and the rest of the time, people say, "Well, how long does it take to charge?" Well, yeah. it takes of my time three seconds. Yeah. yeah, And then I'm in inside watching TV, working on the computer, sleeping. Yeah, whatever. Well, you're living your life. You don't. Yeah, you're not, yeah exactly. Yeah. I'm not, not standing there at yeah, the gas holding station. the wire. <laughs> yeah, or driving around looking for one, or yeah. jockeying in a long line of cars yeah. trying to get it. Yeah. So no, whenever you get up in the morning, your tank is full yes. every day. Yeah. But that is true because I mean the other criticism I always get is that there's no, there's no point having electric cars if they're powered by fossil fuel powered power generation. You know Actually, I mean? that's I wrong too. But I guess um, I've got a feeling that's wrong. Yeah, all the studies <laughs> all the studies have looked at that, well to wheels, and there are some 40 studies that have looked at that, right. um, and all of them conclude that even charging an electric car off the national grid, which is 50% coal, yeah. you're still vastly cleaner. Not right. It's not even close. You're still right. way cleaner than a gas car. Right. It doesn't start evening out on CO2 until your, your grid mix is about 95% coal. Right. So you have to be almost 100% coal before you're even even. So that's right. worst case scenario. And even then, you're still better off going with the electric because the money stays domestic yeah. and you're not 
you know, giving money to your enemies. Yes. Yeah. So, and it's much easier to clean up a coal plant than it is yes, a million Yes, surely. It's got to be. It's got to be, hasn't it? And yeah. we should be getting rid of coal anyway. Yeah. We shouldn't even be using that. Yeah. Because the oil industry and the auto industry have put these lies out there. And over 10, 15 years, they've been, yeah. they hire very high-powered yes. PR firms to write these lies as op-eds in the newspaper, yeah. letters to the editors, yeah. full, you know, full articles in Time magazine, and they're filled with misinformation. Yeah. But it's been a pervasive, ongoing uh, uh, effort to misinform the entire world yeah. about this technology yeah. because they want to delay its implementation. They know they can't stop it permanently, right. but they've delayed it now uh, oh, over a, a decade. A long time. A long time. I would say even longer than that, I oh, think, really. Yeah, and, and so they've been quite successful, and, and now yeah. we've still got the entire world addicted to oil yeah. instead of you know trying all these different alternatives, yeah. particularly batteries. And, and so you, you've got this going on all the time and you've got to you've got to just stop it in its tracks yeah. so that's one of the the things that plug in america our, our group has been quite effective at right. is that we document everything that we say and we find these people who are continuing to lie we seek them out and then we we hit them with the truth right and uh we've started to turn everything around now yeah. and, and it's been quite satisfying to see the changes that um, have occurred. So that is fantastic, Paul. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, Thank you very much pleasure. indeed. Now that was a real thrill. I can now say I've driven a RAV. It's a, what's the official term? RAV. RAV4 EV. A RAV4 EV. Yeah. Now, the one bit of information I discovered uh, after we'd recorded that show um, was very interesting. The patent for the battery technology that exists in that car, which, as you can see, was extremely robust and reliable, was bought in the 1990s, I believe, by a, a little-known um, oil company called Exxon. Exxon bought the patent for many millions of pounds, I'm sure, and they sat on it. They don't want anyone using that technology. Now, why would an oil company buy a battery technology uh, to stop other people using it and to sue people who did try and use it. Why would they do that? What on earth could bring that on? I can't work that out. That's one of those weird business conundrums that's just a mystery, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. See you next week. You only, you, you, what did they say? Yeast is wasted on the young. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> but I think, I always think, well, why can I have my, my 30s again? <laughs> Not my 20s, my 30s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and do it right. Yes. It's yeah. funny, but you're always an idiot in retrospect. Yeah. You, you look back and you think, I know I'm going to look back when I'm 60 and think, what a, what a young idiot I was at 40. <laughs> so do you, yeah, that's true, because I'm now thinking, I've not really thought about that before, but I don't look back at any period in my life and go, Oh, well done. I was so cool then. <laughs> I really got it sussed.